Hello, everyone. I will give a second for us to get connected. <clears throat> I did some practicing last week with the Marabou graphics markers um, based on tips that you guys gave me. And I think I have, I, I don't have a complete handle on them, but I think I, I might have a, an idea of how to use them. Okay, so if you're new here, welcome. I'm Angela, this is Clark Fine Art. And today in our live stream, we're gonna be finishing up the project we started last week. Let me just wait and to see, make sure. Audio is good, video is good, okay. So today, let me show you guys what I was working on. <clears throat> All right, and I did not know. I control everything, oops, I am, I guess I can see you guys too. So I control everything with my iPad, which is plugged in, but for some reason, it looks like my charge is going down. Hopefully it won't mess up. Not like I can't control it. You know, we just roll with it, right? We just roll with it. Hello, well, let's see. Hello, Tara. Hello, Starring Artist Collective. Hello, Gypsy Heart. Of course, hello, Joseph. Just make sure I am not missing anyone. Okay. <clears throat> so. I did a little practicing with them. I kind of really like the uh, the texture I got with my moss. If you can see there, like that's, I was surprised how easy that rendered with um, one of the, you know, the technique that I'm gonna use. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna shift this reference over just slightly. There we go. Hi, Belle. All right. I tried a few things and, all right, there we go. I tried a few things this week and um, one of them was I took one of these water brush, uh, water brushes and I actually filled it with alcohol, rubbing alcohol and at first it seemed like it was working okay, but not on the paper. I have, I have found that with these, that if I put the marker straight to the paper, it dries so fast. And again, just kind of recap, we're working on the Fabriano, the 1264 by Fabriano, which is a mixed media paper. It came, <clears throat> excuse me, I was using the product, products from two of the art boxes I had received because they both had the Marabou graphics markers in them. So just recapping last week, that's where we're at. This paper came in, in one of my subscription boxes with the graphics markers. And of course, if I'm on the screen, you can't see the markers. I'll take me off in, a, in just a few minutes when we actually just dive in and get working. So. I found that when I put them on this paper, which you see, it definitely, they definitely bleed through. So I'm working, I had gone to the last page in the book. They don't transfer to here, or at least they haven't so far. So they're not transferring onto the next page, or in this case, the back of the book, as I decided to do on the, the last page, just in case they did do that, it wouldn't ruin another, another page. Um, so yeah, bleed bleed through but so far not going on to the next piece and when I did this one even with that amount of bleed through if I can grab it here I was working on this this board and it, it didn't really leave any marks on that either so I would say they're not they're not they're not going to bleed through sorry guys I just got really close to the microphone I probably hope nobody was listening with earbuds on that was probably loud I apologize so yeah, they bleed, but not through to the next page so far in my experience. All right. <clears throat> so today 
I really want to focus on getting this finished. I'm just going to set this aside in case I need to test a marker. Actually, I just kind of stick it up top there. Um, look at this one. I thought that guy was cute. Well, the toadstool, but that was one thing I will say. I had all of these, these areas left white and with all the alcohol, they just bled right into that space. So if I was doing something like that, I'd probably come back with either like the Copic white or the Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white and then make those areas white again. I did go over the, I tried one of the mushrooms. I put down the same colors that we have here and my reference photo is not up here. Why is my reference photo not showing anymore? I think that's only on the other screen. I can jump back so you guys can see it, but it's not a big deal. So my, with my mushrooms, I laid in, I laid in, I laid down the same colors I used here. And then I tried to see how it would work out when I painted over them. So I'm not following my reference exactly, but I am just using it as a you know, basic guide, basic guide. We're just going to, we're just going to fill this in. I really want to get this guide done today. So when I first used this, I found that they go on the, when the markers go on the paper, they dry so fast that I then could not really blend so well with this, with just taking the brush to the paper. But if I put them on this ceramic plate, put the markers on this ceramic plate and use the brush to drop some alcohol on there, then I could pick them up and paint with them. And that is what worked best. However, I'm going to say that after a while, it seemed like almost like this was clogged. It just wasn't coming out as well as I'd liked. So I'm not using that today because I don't need to get frustrated. What I am going to do is I put some uh, alcohol in just basic rubbing alcohol. Well, that's very strong rubbing alcohol. <clears throat> but I put some in this container and I'm just going to set it in this. And you know what? Starving, you asked, you commented on the, uh, one of my videos where I showed this little thing before I spill it. This here, does anybody know what this is? Does anybody know what that is? Starving had asked me, what is that little pot? That's what it looks like. It is something old that I have repurposed in the studio. And when I'm painting and I, it, it's a water based medium, I'll put water in here. Of course I put a paint puck in there cause you know, I love my paint pucks and, uh, I think, yeah, starving. Oh, I don't know if I can see it. I just lost it. This is starving artist collector said the water pot is gorgeous. Yeah, I saw this and I actually didn't buy it the moment I saw it. There's a little shop right here in the town where I live and uh, it's called the Raven's Attic and they repurpose. Now this doesn't want to sit right. So they, they, you know, they sell old things. And, uh, when I first saw this, I, I, I passed it up and I got home and I, the more I thought about it, I was like, no, I got to get that. I, I have to get that. So I ran back, <clears throat> excuse me. I ran back to the store. And I was hoping, you know, nobody had bought it in the interim because it had, it hadn't been that long. Um, and they had, obviously they hadn't, I have it. And, uh, that is actually, if you're, I don't know, as old as me or older, you might have seen one of these in your grandparents' bathroom. This is a shaving scuttle. So water would have gone in the base where I, you know, keep my water and such. And up here, you would have had like the, the soap or, you know, that they would lather and you could hold the brush or the razor at the, um, at the back there. And, you know, your grandfather would have lathered up the soap and put it on his face and it was a shaving scuttle. And I thought, no, that is a rinsing pot because look at how great is that? Like I can just brush that off. It goes right back down into the, you know, of course I could do it here too, but you know, now I'm fancy. So yes, that's my, that's my fancy pot. All right, 
So for this today, I think I just so want to dive into this moss. So want to dive into this moss, but I, I just, I got to get these finished first. I got to get them finished first. And for some reason, I'm going to switch this because <clears throat> my reference photo, <clears throat> excuse me, my reference photo disappeared off my computer. I'm sure it's here, but I'm not hunting for it now. So I'm just going to look at the same one you guys are looking at. So what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to mix up some color so I can get this value more similar to what I'm seeing in the picture there. And this is how I decided to do that, which of course, one of you guys suggested last week that I could put the color down for mixing. I could put the color down. And again, I just chose this ceramic palette and, and I have worked a few times on this palette and um, made a big old mess on it. And at the end, I just take a little bit of, take a little bit of the alcohol and it washes right off. It cleans right up. So, and again, I am not going to be overly concerned with the, with this being exactly like the reference. I do want it to be similar, but look at how much faster. Oh my gosh. How much faster does that go? I was just like, when I first tried it this way, it's like, yes. And I have to tell you that this works even faster than when I was trying, you know, with this water brush, that was just, uh -uh, didn't, didn't not do it for me. Okay. So I'm going to have to keep, you know, that is the one downfall though. It's like every time, like when I want to do and I want to paint on my color, I have to kind of work it up on the palette first. So it's a lot of back and forth with the markers. And some of this, I will just put, you know, the marker, it'll go right on, right on the page. I'm not going to do all of this by painting it, but I'm, I was first, I was not liking these markers at all. Now, to be fair, I never used these markers before. Um, I had never used these markers before. I never used any alcohol markers before. So trying to master, and it's hard. Like I just want to keep turning. My, I want to turn my. I'm going to turn it slightly, just slightly. And when they dry, they do, it did seem to get lighter when I had done this, you know, with the other, when I was practicing, they do seem to get lighter as they dry. Do any of you, do any of you guys work with alcohol markers? Do you like them? Do you use them often? Um, I can definitely say, you know, I have the other set and see, that's the thing. Like you have to just, you have to keep mixing up color. I would much prefer regular paint. And the alcohol. Yeah, definitely has. Definitely has a smell. It's strong. It's not too, too bad in here, but it is, it is strong. But I did find that I can thin it down similar to the way that I would do watercolor and my color gets a little bit lighter.
I'm still trying to preserve a little bit of these areas where I had my brightest highlights that I want to try to keep the white of that paper. And of course, you're working with alcohol. It's not like when I mix this up with, um, if I was doing watercolors and was mixing up watercolor, it would stay wet for a while. Well, this alcohol evaporates fast and uh, probably because it's 91%. I was wishing I could, I have some that's like 50 and I don't know how that would have worked in comparison to this. Um, I don't know. Would it have stayed wet longer because there was more water content in it or I don't know, but it definitely, and don't put the, don't put the brush up by your nose while you're marking, while you're marking on the belly because it's not good. By, it's not good guys. It's not good at all. It is strong. That'll get you going. Okay. So starving artist said not tried alcohol markers yet. So curious how your experience goes. And then Gypsy Heart says, I use alcohol markers, but not in the traditional way most do. Interesting. Very interesting. Hello, Teresa. Hello and welcome. I am glad you could join us today. All right. I will say my what's new for this week. I did order some new lights for the studio. And although um, hopefully the lighting situation is much better this week so far, um, I did order some new lights and of course, they won't be here till tomorrow. I was like, of course they won't because I want to stream with them today, but that's okay. The next live stream, we will have them and hopefully you'll start seeing a difference in, you know, the lighting and the videos too. This is definitely my goal. That's what I am working on improving right now. Like I figure once I, once I get that improved and then I will shift my focus to the next thing that I can do to make things better for you guys. Hi, Belle. Belle says, actually, the lighting today is good. So <clears throat> thank you. I was hoping like we messed with it for a while last week I had Lou up here and he was trying to help me figure out different ways where I could position the lights that because I know it's positioning one it's positioning of the lights two it's the type of lights um I was getting a lot of shadow by my the main light that's up in my studio you know in my ceiling that one was um that was casting a lot a lot of shadow because it's behind me in the center of the room and right above my head. So everything coming forward over my shoulder was definitely having shadows cast. All right. It looks a little bit better to the reference photo. I just have to darken up under here and I'll do that after I'm going to come over here and get this one looking similar. Can I see myself, <clears throat> excuse me, can I see myself like having this be a medium that I just go, oh, I can't wait to work with my markers. No, guys, I, I have to be honest with you. I don't. Now, I did say that the, I had gotten two sets of these, a set of 24 and a set of 12. And all the ones from the set of 12 were also in the set of 24. And I am going to reserve the set of 12 to use as like for a future giveaway. I think I'm, I want to do something, you know, at, 
at a milestone point, um, whether it be certain, you know, number of subscribers or I, I'm not a hundred percent positive yet, but as I go through, as I go through my subscription boxes and, and different supplies that I receive, I think that's what I'm going to do with my duplicates. I am just going to start a little stash bin and somehow that stash is going to, I either, I had thought about maybe putting, like once I get all the, the shop part of my website squared away, I thought about just taking some of the stash stuff and I could put it in there at a discount where you guys could pick it up and take advantage of that. Um, I've thought about using some of it for giveaways. So definitely like drop me a comment and let me know if that's something that would interest you guys. Because I would love to, you know, pass it on. And I definitely do not need to have lots of duplicate supplies, especially of supplies that I might otherwise not use again. Like, I really think that, and I don't know, again, markers, all new, all new to me. I have not used markers, which I told you guys last time. I haven't used markers since I was a kid. And even, you know, back then I was not a fan. It always made my art look, you know, streaky and uneven. I didn't like the results that I got. And now, like I said last week too, some of that I am sure was not using the best supplies, best quality supplies. Some of that can be, you know, attributed to not having a good working knowledge of how best to use the medium. So there's that too. But yeah, they were just never one of my favorites. I would much rather, oh, did I bring those up here? Oh my gosh. I would much rather have used some of my colored pencils and I did, I can see them over there. Okay, if I, I'm not stopping what I'm doing right now. I am focused. Um, but maybe in later, in a few minutes, something, I can uh, grab them. I'm gonna show you guys the, one of my old sets of colored pencils that I found. I used to love those pencils. I used to thought they were like the best thing. I can't believe I found them. I can't believe I still had them. <clears throat> Hi, JR. See, I've remembered. I am glad you made it. Bill said, I love markers as a kid, but that was a long time ago. Wait a minute. Did I put too many O's in there? Sorry. It was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago for me too. Um, yeah. I do love though that I can just throw a little bit of, you know, this is letting me mix colors. That was a huge frustration last week. I was like, I knew what color I wanted. I couldn't see it in the set of 24 and to make it work and mix on my paper, it just wasn't happening for me. So I do love that I'm able to mix up my color this way. Yeah, there was the concentration pause and talking there. Sorry guys. And I like that once uh, I start to, oh, oh, that just gave me a cool texture. So there's not a lot of the pigment left on my brush here. And I'm just laying that on its side and gently going over it and just letting the tooth of the paper grab that. I actually, I don't know if you guys can, 
it actually gave me a neat little texture. Like I can see the tooth of the paper. Interesting. I liked it. So let's see what's upcoming. I wanted to make sure I like dive into what you're doing today and try to remember to tell you guys everything as I was working. I have got, I'm, I am still trying to get my a studio tour film for you guys for next week. Because again, next week, I won't be live, but I will have a video for you at the same time at three o'clock Eastern time on Thursday. So there will be a video there to be watched. I know not everybody celebrates Thanksgiving. My battery is not. Okay. I, I have a backup plan. It's okay. Like I control, I control everything through my iPad that goes through Streamlabs OBS to get to you. <clears throat> right now my iPad had like 29% because somebody forgot to charge your iPad. Yeah. I forgot a lot of things in the last 24 hours. So I plugged it in before the stream and now it's saying... 8%? It says it's charging, but it still says like 8%. Okay. I think I'm liking that color. Oh, there's a bird. A little bird just flew right outside my window. Like he just flew in, looked, he's like, what are you guys doing in there? And took off again. So I, what I was saying was, I know that not everybody celebrates Thanksgiving. We do here in the U.S. And um, so I still wanted to bring the video. I, you know, I still wanted to have a video but it won't be live. So hopefully I can get that studio tour filmed and that's what I will be bringing you next week. And hopefully if all goes well, if all goes well, hopefully I will also have some announcements to share with you next week. All right. And now I need a darker color. So I think I'm liking where those are going right now. And all of a sudden my nose wants to start itching. Classy. So classy. Oh, you are so correct. Oh my gosh. No wonder. You know what, Joseph, you are on it. What would we do without you? <laughs> that is so, yeah. Turn the screen, turn the brightness down, save on the battery life. So normally my iPad is always turned way down because if I'm using it at nighttime, like I can't stand that bright screen. Um, but I just looked over and I was like, you know what? That is really bright. It was all the way up. So yeah, no wonder it was not, um, the battery was going fast. Gypsy Heart says blending alcohol markers when using them in the traditional way, like drawing with the markers themselves happens the best way on the right kind of paper. And see, that's what my thought was. I was like, <clears throat> These may blend beautifully if I was using marker paper. Hmm. And for whatever reason, they chose to send mixed media paper in that box. And that's what I had. So that's what we're using. But I was like, these may be like, I may try them with a marker paper. Cause I think I do have marker paper. I think in one of those boxes, so many darn boxes. Um, so maybe I will give them one more try before I say, mm, not really for me. Tara, can I say just how amazing the painting behind you is? You can. Go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. If people aren't seeing that, that is, if you remember way back, live stream, what was that? Live stream number two? That was the commission I started with you guys. That was, oh, that, that was a project and a half. Like that pushed me. I loved doing the commission because it challenged me so much. Like it, it really pushed my limits. That sky, when it transitions from where the sunset is, like up into the top, I mean, it had these like, it had greens, but then there's also like these, the sky was not perfect for painting that day. 
<laughs> it was not. That transition was like, oh, so anyhow. But there it is. I got it. It took a while and I kept at it. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with the way it came out. And the people that are getting it are thrilled. It's been varnished. It's been signed. It's been varnished. It is all done. It is ready to go. And it gets delivered um, around Thanksgiving time. Odd Bell. Lol. Well, ADHD. Not everyone celebrates Thanksgiving. Oh, look, a bird. Okay, see? Yeah, that's it. Exactly, guys. Um, ADHD is strong with this one. So... Decision to not text through Thanksgiving dinner for a premiere. Family rebelled? I don't know. I haven't 100% decided on that yet. Like, I really would like to set it as a premiere and just, like, sneak off and have my phone, like, setting so that I... Not necessarily sneak off and have my phone, you know. I haven't decided yet. Premiere, not a premiere. I still have to converse with Lou on that one a little bit more and find out, like, Hey, do you mind if I just have the chat up on my phone? And, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a possibility. Possibility. I haven't a hundred percent ruled that out yet, but I did give on the coming up here and hiding away to live stream. That didn't seem to be going over too well. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. I think we would have had fun, but you know, I was out rolled. Uh, oh, yes, absolutely, right? You are correct, Starving. Joseph is the tech king. If it comes to... Uh, wow. Photoshop. Mm -hmm. And apparently saving my iPad from dying during my stream. I guarantee your experience would be better if they had given you the marker paper. That's the only downside to sub boxes. You're at the mercy of what they sent. Yes, absolutely. I agree. One box I saw, they sent something that was not water mixable as if it was. It was oil based. So the other stuff they sent made no sense. Yeah, I've seen that. I have seen that a few times in some. Oh, look at that brown. That came out. Okay. Do you guys remember what I put down? <laughs> I'll remember what I put down. <clears throat> I like that see how it works um yeah i've seen that in a few boxes so i'm just dabbing in some of the darker and i think that's actually too dark but it's there now we'll see how it dries maybe i'll get lucky and it'll dry lighter i don't know it's gonna be a good color for the underneath i think I just keep looking at my reference photo. And again, there's that whole trying to focus. And I think I got things fixed on my end on my chat too, because before I was getting all kinds of stuff highlighted as if you guys were talking to me, excuse me. And you weren't, you were kind of talking amongst each other. So now I, when I get tagged, when you use the at Clark fine art, that actually highlights now. And I see that stuff. So it's definitely helping, definitely helping. So I had my, wanted to start filming my studio tour, which I have not had a chance to do yet. I did, like I said, get that commission finished. So that is a huge, huge weight off my shoulders that that is done. And uh, I'm excited because it's going to allow me to get working on some other projects that I want to do for my channel. 
and content that I want to bring you guys. Let's see. It is very hard, very hard to see. My reference photo is so tiny on my screen where I'm seeing what you guys are seeing. All right. Yeah, see, the more I go in that rubbing alcohol, it gets um, <clears throat> lighter and lighter. Oh, thank you, JR. Yeah, I had, I had mentioned that before. Um, the lighting is perfect this week. I definitely worked on that like I told you guys I was going to. I'm liking, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm liking it a lot better for what you're seeing. It's not exactly not exactly the best for for me for actually right now it's not bad right now it's not bad before I, when i had my overhead still on <clears throat> and trying to see and i was just casting shadows everywhere um but i also did i ordered so i ordered new lights and they will be here tomorrow i also ordered so i have the lights that I'm using right now, there's a couple ring lights on. I'll show you guys, or you'll probably see them when I film my studio tour. But the um, couple ring lights that I have, they were, they're just so, they're still too much. Like my face is washed out. If I could right there, you know, oops, as I bumped my whole rigging. If I get my, um, yeah, words, I bought these fabric pieces that I can put over them to make them more like a soft box. So once I can do that, I think that's going to help even more. And then when I can put in the new lights that I got, hopefully that will help even more. All right. Well, let's see. This guy's a little harder for me to see. They have these, like, these mushrooms had this, like, ridge, and then, so they kind of, like, stepped, stepped down, and then stepped out again. So just trying to get some of those little shadows in there. And I need to get myself moving. So let me see what else, what else is going to be going on next Tuesday, next Tuesday's video, I will be bringing you, I will unbox the November palette pack box, the palette pack premiere, which of course, when I show you a palette pack box, whether you get the regular palette packs or palette packs premiere, everything from the regular one is also in the premiere. So. I'm able to kind of tell you exactly what you'd get either box. So Tuesday at three, it's going to be that one. And, um, oh, I did the new format last week when I did my art snacks where I actually did the unboxing and then I did the art. Um, that seemed to, that seemed to be pretty well received. That is definitely going to be, that's going to be my new format. Um, I don't have a, a subscription box where I have a bunch of boxes stored up now, um, you know, to be able to do a big, like, Hey, this is what you can expect if you chose this brand art subscription box. So now we're just going to actually be focusing on here are the boxes. Oh, there was a, there's a lot of alcohol in there. Shoot. I don't want that to bleed. That's going to bleed up into my mushroom was not paying attention. I was not. 
was a lot just like just like with watercolor there was a lot of liquid in that paintbrush so it spread up into my mushroom just slightly but it's fine we'll we'll work with it so yeah next week tuesday at 3 p.m eastern is going to be the palettful pack unboxing for november and we will be creating some art I have a new video, barring no more issues with my computer and I, we were having it out today. Well, yesterday and today. Oh my goodness. It was not good. It was not good at all. There was nothing wrong with my computer. It was, I should say, my hard drive, my external hard drive, because I don't save. I work on a MacBook Pro. That's actually, I'm streaming to you from my MacBook Pro. I do everything on my MacBook Pro. Mm. So on my MacBook Pro, I have multiple monitors hooked up. And anything that I record, when it goes to my computer, I do not put it on my actual computer. I put it directly to an external hard drive because I don't want to load up my computer and then cause issues, it bogging down, whatever. You know, the more you fill them up, the slower they want to work. So, yeah, my external drive was like, oh, guess what? I'm full and I don't want to make this video for you. And I don't want to finish it and I have no place to store it. And I'm like, how the heck is it full? I have a six terabyte hard drive, six terabytes. Yep. It was full. So then I'm like, oh great. And I have to make the choice because I ordered a new hard drive. I actually found a deal and I ordered two. I ordered two new hard drives um, so that I would have another one and back up and then this couldn't happen to me again in the future but when I did that then I was like well I've got to keep working because I have got a project that I am really excited to do and want to bring you guys soon I'm like if I don't get working on that it's not gonna be able to happen so and I needed to get the video out for patrons for Saturday so, yeah, I was fighting. I was fighting with that. Decided on a few videos that I, I would part with that I had saved, you know, that I had saved in my system. And I just deleted them. And then I was like, well, why? Why is it still? I mean, I've deleted like six or seven videos. Why can't it push this one video that's, you know, within an hour? And I've deleted multiple videos that were over an hour. So anyways, come to find out very long story shortened. Um, my video editing software was saving these like astronomical sized files. And I was like, Oh, I didn't have to delete the raw footage. I could have you know, or, and I didn't delete any of my, like the videos that I actually pushed to YouTube on, I didn't delete those. I was like, I'm, I'm not deleting this. If anything should ever happen to YouTube, you know, and I need to get to a different platform, I'm not going to lose my whole library, which once the, once the hard drive is full, you know, I'll just store it and start using another one. So anyhow, that was, I finally won. I deleted some of the files from processing and creating and editing videos. And so I had ordered two hard drives when I was done. Once I figured out how I could delete stuff to free up space. Oh my gosh. I still have all my videos, but because I deleted those files where the computer was working on them, which I really don't need anymore. All of a sudden now, I've only used 
0.6 terabytes of this hard drive. So I just went and ordered two 8 terabyte hard drives. This 6 terabyte hard drive now only has 0.6 of 1 terabyte on it. So I was like, okay, I can't justify spending the money to get two hard drives that size. So luckily I asked Lou to try to cancel one. And uh, he told me this morning it actually did go through. It canceled. So I was like, well, that's good because I, I did not want to have to spend that just now. And then I was like, oh, no. Well, you know what? You already spent it. Maybe you should have just let them come because who knows in the future, um, you know, a year, year and a half, two years down the road when I might actually need another drive again. Who knows what they're going to cost then? Uh, could be could be worse or or maybe it was a smart decision not to get it yet. I don't know, but it is what it is. That's what happened. So now I just have to finish editing, edited editing. Saturday's video for patrons. This is like, it moves, it dries so fast. Guys, by the time I come back to this plate, that's dry again. It is completely dry again. And then let me share with you, whoa, this is the painting that will be up for patrons on Saturday. We will be doing that winter scene. And um, that was done with some acrylics. I tried a, I tried a new brand of acrylic paint and uh, have, have any of you used Amsterdam? I tried them for the first time on that painting. I like them. They are really creamy. They're really creamy. Um, very smooth. They laid down excellent. All right, I need to darken. Those are not dark enough, but we're moving on. We are moving on. I'm gonna do some of this, the log that's back here. I know I'm gonna want, oops, I gotta write on myself. I know I'm gonna want that to be much darker brown. I'm like shaking you guys. So that's the next thing. Once I get all the lighting figured out, I need to work on this rigging. So right now, my rigging is attached, the ring that holds my cameras um, and my lights, it's attached to my desk. So if I start aggressively, you know, working with the pencil or marker or whatever I'm gonna shake you guys all over the place all right do you, do you guys do this with your palette you see how my like my space just grows I can't just I cannot use a small palette cannot I just really it just exponentially grows I'm actually gonna take a little bit of this dark color I said I was moving on but Just want a little bit more at that top. Same with this guy. Okay.
just filling in back here. And this in the back was uh, like part of the tree had come up. Almost like, um, you know, birch bark, how the white, the birch bark will peel. So it was like part of the tree was sticking up back there. I'm assuming probably part of the bark. It was hard to, it's hard to make it out in that photo. And I am not worried in this piece at all about, you know, how realistic. I don't mind if it ends up with an animated feel to it. I don't mind. I'm just happy that uh, I'm finally making these markers work. Because last week, I was worried. I was like, oh, this is not going to be good. <laughs> I said I would do it. I would just, I would grab the new supplies and we'll, we'll try it and have fun and whatever happens happens. But, uh, yeah, I was like, Oh, okay. I said, whatever happens happens, but it's going to be crazy. That needs to be much darker. So they definitely, when they go on, it thins down. And then I need that to look more brown as it comes forward this way, because we're seeing the other side of it and it's quite a bit lighter. Just still mixing that with some of the much darker value that was on the plate there. All right. Like, hey, it got really quiet in here. You guys stop talking. It wasn't me. I didn't stop talking. Right, it was me. Okay. I'm going to do some of the markings on the birch tree next because it's not going to take long to make a birch tree look like a birch tree. It's like I kept seeing people walking by outside. I definitely need to darken that back area up. Definitely. That is nowhere near as dark as it needs to be. So if this is just a brutal way for some of you to watch me use alcohol markers, I apologize. But you know what? It's it's working for me. I mean, we're, we're getting it. We're getting through it. So it might not be the best way. It might not be the right way. But. Let's see. Teresa says, I have the Palpable Packs Plus box for November. I can't wait. Ooh, I also started getting the Art Snacks Plus. I was very happy with Art Snacks Plus this month. I was very happy. Of course, that was last, that was last Tuesday's video, so. If you missed that, I will 
go ahead after we're done being live and once it processes pop a link to that up here but that art snacks plus box I was very happy with that one I was thrilled and it was a good thing too because I had said if they didn't start to impress me that box may be one that would I would cancel and you know put that money towards something else that can benefit you know supplies or something that I could benefit bringing to you here on the channel But yeah, palettful packs next Tuesday. I loved that box too. So you'll have to tune in and check that out. Of course, Teresa, you know what's in that box. And again, I will be doing that same new format where I'm going to unbox and then bring you the art. And I am also working on making the videos a little more that I'm chain doing a few changes in formatting and you're going to see it starting to happen over the course of you'll start to see it being implemented over the course of the next few the next few videos so you will definitely have to drop me comments and let me know what you think as you see those videos come out Oh, great question. JR asked, do you have alcohol in your water pot? Yes, that is what is in here. I have this tiny little cup that's in here, has a lid. It almost looks like, like the old 35 millimeter film canisters. And that has the rubbing alcohol in it. So... That's allowing me to put the marker down on the plate and then blend this color and mix my colors. Cause I was definitely last week. I was like, I don't know. This is not going to work out so well because I'm not going to be able to get the color that I want. You know what I mean, I wasn't seeing, <clears throat> I wasn't seeing a, a version that was close to what I, okay. That's definitely that's too dark. I need more brown. Do you see how it keeps growing? It just kind of keeps. But anyhow, I was not seeing a version where of color that would be what I wanted for parts of this painting. And I was like, especially like for the mushrooms, like that was my big thing. I'm like, how am I going to get this going? And then of course I started with the mushrooms last week. So we didn't get very far. But I'm still hoping, still hoping. I am trying to watch my time, Joseph. <laughs> but I'm hoping that I can get us really close, if not completely finished while we're live. I will not be bring, carrying this over to another stream. So hopefully I can get it completely done. And if not, I will be finished. And of course, I'll post it on Miwi, so you guys can see it. So many layers to build. I mean, it just it dries and it's lighter, and it's like I could come in with just the black marker. I'm sure on top of here, but it's not exactly what I was going for. Okay, but with this dark color, if I lighten this, just adding more of the alcohol. Try to. Thin down that color some. All right. So for where my birch tree is, I'm just going to come through here. Um, hopefully I don't have too much. I don't want a lot in my brush because I really want to get some of that. 
So that's not giving me, I was hoping to get that soft texture that I got before when I was doing this, but of course there was like next to nothing in my brush then. Maybe if I, I don't know. And just trying to look at, it, it's a birch tree, right? Um, I don't know if you have birch trees where you are. There are, there we go. Now I'm starting to get it. See, I had to get, I had to get some of that, use up some of what was in that brush. I wanted that little, just kind of skipping across the surface here so that I could get texture like it was bark that birch bark, you know, it's darker in some areas than others, like the white, like the paper birches. Oh, those are absolutely my favorite. We have, um, we planted, I probably got carried away, but whatever. We planted about three as a cluster. No, it's a cluster of four that we planted here on the property. And, uh, I love them. I just think they're the most gorgeous trees. They're bark. I like their bark. And now I'm just coming in and I'm kind of outlining a little bit of where the moss is going to sit here. And perhaps I'll just give an edge to this tree. Again, I don't mind if this looks animated, you know, or illustrated. That's probably the better. I don't mind if it looks like a more illustrative when it's done. Yeah, it doesn't lift well, but you can get that brush cleaned out there. Nope. Nope, making it worse. Stop. You guys do that. It's not working. Keep going. No, it's not working. Don't keep going. <laughs> Just cleaning some of that out of my brush. Oh, I agree. <clears throat> Those 35 millimeter film canisters were the most useful thing invented. Used them for everything. Weren't they? It's like... What couldn't you put in one of those? All right. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to kind of glance up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to glance up at my reference photo up there. I'm just making sure that I have the lightest. There we go. Lightest of my greens. When I was doing this moss, when I did my practice run like this, this guy, I knew that I'm going to have to make sure that I pay attention to the areas where, and I hope this renders on here as fast as it rendered when I was playing with it because it went quick. Focusing on where the uh, lightest areas are because there's like a dark area here and he's just kind of tucked back into that. But then up around here, like this is where the moss gets brighter. And then moss just trying to, I am trying very hard not to make patterns. So hard for our brain. Kara said they were probably the most repurposed item ever. I, yep. Yep, we are all agreeing. So I'm focusing on where my lightest values need to stretch into. I'm making sure 
that as I mark, put down marks, you'll see I'm just kind of literally, I'm doing like little squiggles, leaving plenty of spaces because I need to be able to come back in with other colors. I want to get a, um, well, it's close to the impression of moss as I can. And uh, Starving says, video is buffering a little bit. Is anybody else having issues? Anybody else having issues? I'm not showing any problems on my end. Okay, Bell said mine's fine. All right. I'm not showing any issues on my end. I was looking at it because I did, I did finally fix it. Joseph, you only told me forever ago. Um, apparently my, when it was pushing the video, it was not pushing the video in like 1080p. It was pushing, well, well below. It wasn't pushing 720 and Joseph said his is fine as well. Oh yeah, the best part about the for the film canisters, they had a good seal. Yeah, they did. Carry all kinds of stuff in there. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep laying in some of these areas, like looking at where my lighter values are are going to come into play and yep I am just making some squiggly lines but when I come back and work in between with my midtones and then my darks that's when I got I, I just loved the effect that I ended up getting so I'm hoping I can pull it off on here and it will render this moss quickly and we can get through out of our gnome. And then if we still have time, we'll do more focus on some more details. But for now, I want to make sure that we at least can get through. And you'll have to let me know what you think about this technique. As you see right now, it's just a bunch of little scribbles. That's what it looks like to me. A bunch of little scribbles. And I just picture this like big fluffy blanket of moss just coming right down around him. For a second, I thought I was using the wrong one. I was going to be like, no. And then the way that I made this all cohesive. Oh, it just came. It just. It all came together so easily. When I was doing that, I mean, I sat down. I probably did that in two minutes. Like it went fast. And I said, here's hoping. <laughs> here's hoping I can bring it to you guys like that. All right, that's going to be more light. Teresa said, I loved your new format. I, I am assuming that you are talking about last Tuesday's video with Art Snacks. Um, where I actually unbox and then create and thank you. That's, I definitely appreciate the feedback because that is, I am certainly trying to make sure that I'm making the content that, you know, you guys want to see. When I first started, I was like, I'm not going to be an unboxing channel. That is not what I'm doing here. And then I was sitting there and had, um, a whole bunch of art subscription boxes laying around. And I was like, you know, 
I should really do a video with those. Yep, that is still the best performing video on my channel. And every time I opened up a box and shared supplies, those videos were doing great. And I was like, well, I guess the audience has spoken. <laughs> I guess we know what some of you guys like. And I get it. Oh my gosh, I totally get it. I like all the pretty things too. All right, so now I'm going to switch to my mid value here. And I'm going to start to fill in some of these areas. And I'm still leaving space because I need to come back. I don't want to fill everything in with this because I need to be able to come back and add darker values. But some areas like these areas over here, this is my lightest value. And so I'm going to treat that just like I did these. And I'm telling you, it's still like, right? It looks like all these little squiggles until the very end, and then it doesn't. I watched, oh, she's not here. She's not on today. I haven't seen her. Caution artist at play, Shana Rowe Jackson. If you guys haven't seen her channel, she did, she did one of her videos. She did some moss. I was in love. I was like, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. The detail in it. I mean, she hit it out of the park. It was, it was amazing. I want to say that was the one where she did her, um, yes, yes, Belle, that's it. You know the one I'm talking about, the moss, the moss queen. She, it was like a fairy, it was like a fairy sitting on the rock and that was covered with moss, which uh, this kind of reminds me of the, you know, the moss cascading over, but, oh, that was with colored pencil and I, I love if you, if anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, look up caution artists at play and check in on, um, check her, check out her channel and see some of the detail work that she does in her, uh, with the colored pencils, like her backgrounds, like nature, natural leaves, moss, that kind of thing. Amazing. Such a good job. Let's see. Her backgrounds are brilliant. Oh yeah. And ink tense. Yeah. She did do that too. Yes. And ink tense. Oh yeah. If you guys haven't, if there's anybody that hasn't seen it yet, I definitely recommend go check it out because she did a great job. Can I zoom in more on the drawing? That is hard to do at the moment because of my current setup. Actually, let me see. Hold on one quick second. Let me see if I can do this. I don't know. see if I can do it. You guys tell me if it's better. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, you ready? Tell me if this works for you. Is that better? Does that help? Although now I'm not seeing my, I am not seeing my picture. Because I didn't add it in here. That's all right. Just a second.
Sorry, guys. I'm trying to see if I can bring that right in. Maybe, maybe I might have it. There we go. How's that? How's that? How's that for on the fly? I was like, I'm going to mess something up. I'm going to mess something up. <laughs> okay. So back to my moss. And again, um, I just found that when I do all these little lines, I mean, it just literally looks like a bunch of little squiggles until right at the end. And then you guys can't see it because I'm a little zoomed in now. And then it doesn't, it just, everything kind of goes right together. So that's what we are. That's what we're working on. And it was important that I left by leaving those, putting in the highlight first. This is how it, it worked best for me. By putting in the highlight first, it kind of kept me focused on where that needed to be. I couldn't, I couldn't take up that space. Like if I had just left it white, it might've been easy, easier to go over it and, um, Jason said that looks great. Okay, good. Good. So it might have been easier for me to go over and miss that, you know what I mean? Like lose that white space when I need to keep it. So by put or not necessarily white, but the lightest value, space for the my lightest value. So by doing it this way, I found it kept that light value. And then I just got to come back in with my mid-tones, which is what we're getting in there now. And then come back with the darker values. So what is everyone's favorite medium to work with? What are the mediums that you guys most like to either work with yourself or see done on, you know, some of the YouTubers that you watch? What are your favorites? I know that, like, I love to work in acrylics, but I don't necessarily watch a lot of, well, with the exception of Lisa, Lisa does, or used to, she hasn't done a whole lot lately, but as far as in acrylic. Um, well, that's not true. She just did that last night. Okay. Never mind. But anyhow, acrylic, uh, was something that I definitely, you know, I love to work with them, but I didn't watch a lot of, like I would watch, I love watching watercolor because I am so fascinated with getting watercolor to listen. Watercolor is like, you know, to me right now, watercolor is like a three-year-old. Uh -huh. Joseph said, my favorite medium is art supplies. 
Well, we know that that's true for me too. I am definitely like got an art supply addiction. I love the art supplies. All right, let's get to darken up there. We got to darken him up in here. So now I'm being very careful to not go into my little gnome. And I thought I was going to do my gnome. I thought I was going to have him have a red hat. But I don't know. I'm kind of thinking going more with something orange. Like you see my little cartoon gnome that I popped in the the picture there. That's That was just for, you know, for you guys to say, oh, okay, there's going to be a gnome there. Not that gnome specifically. So what color should his hat be? What color should his hat and his shoes be? Help me out. You guys pick. And I will do them that color. Need to know what color hat he needs and what color shoes. Do his shoes match his hat? Is he that kind of gnome? Does he does he coordinate? Oh my goodness, we're getting there. We are getting there. So now I have to go back through and now put in the darks where the darkest darks need to be. Okay, this is where I'm going to spend a lot more time <clears throat> looking at my reference because I want to make sure, like, I'm getting the shadow from my mushrooms there. And when I put this down, I'm looking for, some of it I'm going over a little bit of my other values. But I want to make sure that I'm filling in some of that white, the white spaces that I left for the shadows. So I'm trying to also be conscious of that and not letting my lightest values disappear. <clears throat> and if I still leave, if I still leave some areas that are white, don't worry. Like if you try this to get this effect, don't worry about if some of the areas are white. It is okay because you will be, you'll see. And in a moment, you're going to see how I'm going to kind of pull all this together and make it look like moss. Just like one big old clump of moss that's growing over the tree. I even found with my other one that once I had this value down, I still didn't have some values that were um, quite as dark as I wanted. I needed them still to be a little bit darker in some places. And so for that, I had mixed up on my, on my plate some of this dark green and just a tiny bit of the black and that just deepened it up nicely. Speaking of greens, like I think of moss green, if I was painting this in acrylic, sometimes, I don't know if you guys do this, but I do, mm. it, versus just grabbing a green, like there, somebody may make the perfect green for moss, but if I'm doing things that are going to be green, especially dark greens um, and in nature, like the green that I see the moss in the reference photo. I will take Mars Black and I will take Cad Yellow and I will mix those two together and gosh, if that does not just give you the most gorgeous, just gives you the most gorgeous greens. Have you guys done that? Have you just mixed yellow and black to get green? It gives you a, a gorgeous olive tone, earth tone green. I love it. All right. So right here, this part of the moss kind of tucks in. So this needs to get a bit darker. This here, it's tucking in. All right. And then down 
down here. We still have some more. So again, I'm just little dots and squiggles and I will get you, I'll bring this even closer to the camera so that you can see before I do the final step and bring this all together. And we need some ridges up here. And now in here, where he's leaning, it is much darker in here as well. Because this kind of like, it kind of tucked in. So in the original, where the, the original reference photo, before I added um, the gnome here, this part was very dark. It had just naturally tucked in there. And I thought, oh, you know what? There's like, there's like a little woodland creature that needs to be hanging out and taking a nap right back in there. And that was how I ended up choosing the little gnome. I'm going to check the chat here in a second, see if you guys have come up with some ideas for colors. And you can start to, you can already start to see with these values going down, you can already start to see that moss kind of starting to take shape. Again, just, just paying attention to the values, right? Where are my darks going? Where do my lights need to go? catching along some of these edges like the you know the moss sitting on the log so it's maybe some shadowing happening under there and I'm doing that with this one because it is my darkest value and of course I'm not going to go everywhere like I just went back along here but as it came back out I'm not necessarily seeing the shadow until it starts coming back in over here so just kind of trying to focus on that type of you know, where, where might my shadows actually be seen as I'm looking at it here? Because on my, on my, um, you know, my mushrooms, the highlights on my mushrooms are more coming from this way. So yeah, probably putting my shadows on the wrong, on the wrong side now that I explain it to myself. <laughs> it's okay. I'm not angry. It's fine. It'll all work out wonderful. Just wonderful. Okay, just lost my reference for a second there. Oh, and that actually needs to come down a little bit further. I'll have to bring some more colors, other colors back in. This actually needs to come down a little bit more. Bring some of that dark up in here. Cause it's like these lines, these marks that I make with the actual marker straight on the paper. These don't seem, like I said, once they dry, they don't seem to disappear or blend out. Those marks stay. So I was hoping because I noticed that was happening when I was practicing my moss, I was like, well, maybe if that's the case, then Perhaps if I take um, and put some of these marks down, then I could go over, go over it again and kind of get everything nice and smooth and all kind of cohesive and still maintain 
those marks that will make it look like, hey, it's moss. So we're hoping this is a much bigger scale than what I did that other little sample on. But what's the worst that can happen? We end up with a masterpiece or we learn. As long as we have fun, it's all, it's all good. Okay. Forgot to take my watch off. I silenced my phone for you guys. But I forgot to take my watch off. So, fail. All right. Now, here I'm just putting little bits. I'm not getting heavy-handed with my dark color in the areas that I wanted to be light. Because there's just going to be some of that shadow in there. But my lighter values and my mid-tones are going to be what I'm seeing more of. All right. And I really want, like right now, this green, I mean, it's, it's so very, very green. And I think versus what I did on my last one, I'm actually going to bring... A little bit of yellow tone, a little bit of yellow tone into it as I bring it all together. Just we've got the yellow with the mushrooms. I'm looking at that reference and I'm seeing definitely some more yellowish greens. All right. And this definitely needs to darken up. really darkening up along this edge right now. And again, I may have to come back through with like a little bit of green and black mixed in to really get the darkest value that I want in here. And I would do that with the paintbrush. I'll just blend them on the palette and bring it in. Okay. I'm going to come back to my latest. That's not my latest, right? That's my latest color. And add in a little bit more in some of these areas. Still lots of white space, lots of white space on showing through. All right, so now I will show this to you up close. And I think I'm going to have to darken in around him because I want him to stand out more. Let me catch up with the chat real quick first. Hi, D. D says purple hat. Teresa said yes, last Tuesday's video with Art Snacks. I really loved it. Thank you. purple and orange hat, purple tunic, orange shoes. You don't see his tunic because this little gnome has got quite the beard. So unlike up in the, that little picture that's, you know, up here in the reference, that was just a little cartoon gnome that I, it was free for me to use. And I just kind of stuck him there because I wanted you guys to see like a color version of what we were going to be working on versus my rough sketch. Um, huh, Starving says, I actually really like the ink blot on your palette. Quite sculptural. And uh, yeah, look at, what is it? Uh, what's some weird stuff? Oh, look at that. Oh, that almost looks like, I just saw a face. Like here's the eye and a nose and like a mouth. 
And there's the hair. Well, it's going to be a shame to mess with that now. Look at that. <laughs> That's funny. How many people do that? See, see the things. Okay. All right. And I'm guessing the rest of the chat is you guys amongst yourselves. So now I'm going to mix up. I'm going to take, if I can remember my latest value. See, it's really hard for me to see in the studio. Like I can see it. You see how close those are, but really if I pull this down. Like there's that guy. And then there's that guy. So they are not, I'm only not the same and I need the lighter one and I want to make this want to warm it up and I'm using the lightest green to fill in all these spaces and I'm trying to shake you guys again. So the lightest green to fill in all these, to get all the white spaces filled in, but I want a yellow. I want some yellow. I don't know that I want pure yellow. I may want, hmm, if I go orange, it's going to mix with that green and that is going to go brown. So I want yellow. Although I'm something like everything's going, just use a dot. All right, we're going to try that. Let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. What's the worst that can happen? Okay. I think I like it. I think I like it. I think I want more yellow though. I want to really brighten it. Look at, oh my gosh, that looks like almost neon. That looks almost neon on the camera. Does that look like that bright to you guys? Okay. See, again, like I try to mix something on my palette and it just like, the space just grows and I push all the color elsewhere. Then I try to pull it back together. You guys do this. This is, the struggle is real, guys. <laughs> this, is, this is it. All right, let's test this. Now I'm going to test it on a darker area first because, you know, if it's not quite right, it's not going to be. Oh, I think I like it. Oh yeah. I like it. Okay. Oh, when I showed you guys, I was going to show you. So you see the texture. It's just a bunch of squiggly lines. And so there's a lot of white space in that. And now hopefully when we add this in, we're going to end up with what I was thinking we could do. So now I'm just going to go right over everything with this. Oh my gosh, at first glance, when I just started putting down that color, the way that it's changing, looks like I'm, uh, looks like I'm painting one of those military, you know, the military, they wanna cover their vehicles if they're out in the field, whatever. Um, those of you who are familiar with the military or familiar with movies with the military, they've done it in those two. All right. See, I'm going to need to mix up a lot more, but now I know. Now I know the color I want. And this is, see, this is where it gets hard because one spot, because that is not dry yet. Now, if I dried that, I could go right back in and keep mixing, but because there's still alcohol that's wet there, the marker reacts oddly in that space. Like it doesn't want to, <clears throat> doesn't want to let the color down. And then lots of yellow. And a little bit of orange. Oh, I saw this. I was looking up some stuff with markers and I saw this thing where they had like the two markers and they just kind of put the tips together. And so then like if I did it with the orange and the yellow, like they put the tips together for a minute and then they would take the yellow 
and they would start and it would like start with that orange and just blend back out to the yellow and I thought it was I thought it was pretty neat I did not try it will it work with these I don't know but uh I thought it was pretty cool So once I come through with this, what I'll do is if there's any areas that need darkening, then I would mix up, I would mix up my black and green and then come in and just darken those with the brush. But right now this is just kind of filling in all that white space and just toning it. And it'd be so much easier. If this okay I do not need that much orange that is not what I was going for but it'd be so much easier if this was like an intense block you know that I could just grab a bunch of it with water and mix it up to make my color trying to get a lot this time so that hopefully and get a lot further but I did find that like this this plate afterwards sorry guys I'm shaking the heck out of you this plate afterwards all I have to do is come at it with um, some rubbing alcohol and paper towel completely cleans it all right off all right You have to work quickly because it dries so fast. So using this paper, I was trying to think like, I would definitely give a go with some colored pencils on it um it's not super heavy like watercolor paper I don't know that I would use water um watercolor on it maybe if it were if I was doing like watercolor pencils it would be okay I mean it says mixed media but yeah it's I wouldn't come at this with straight watercolors I would not I would not. I'd be afraid that I would, uh, it would just buckle and warp like crazy. Okay. I, I can't, I'm liking my, I'm liking my trial moss a little better, but it had a lot more darks in it too. And I keep putting that by my nose again. Colored pencil. So I'm like, okay, what was everybody talking about? That was when I asked you what mediums you like. Hmm. So JR says watercolor. I'm in love with watercolor right now. I am, I was working on, uh, I was planning, doing some planning for content and I was like, had a few projects. I, I, in my side notes, I'm like, oh, maybe watercolor. And then, you know, I was doing some more planning. And then I noticed like three or four projects. I'm like, maybe watercolor, maybe watercolor. So subconsciously, I think I'm really wanting to work with some watercolor. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to be, what mediums are coming, which is part of why I was asking what you guys like. Color pencil, watercolor, and acrylic, says Teresa. alcohol is strong I'm trying to keep it wet I'm trying to work quickly and here I have to be very careful so I paint around my little paint around my little gnome 
And this is where it's hard because those lines are faint. Those lines are faint. Just for a minute. There we go. And these brushes, this brush that I'm using today, and I grabbed another one just in case, like when it comes down to doing the gnome, if I need to do more detail, I grabbed a finer detail brush. But if you recognize this brush that I'm using, this is the brush that I got in the Pagos watercolor set. And I thought, well, I don't know what alcohol will do to it. It wasn't my absolute favorite. Like I hoped to love it more than I did for the watercolor. But I was like, I'll just use it. I'll just use it on this project and see what I think. Not disappointed. Okay. Our moss is getting there. And I just have to get through this side. Then I'm going to do the gnome. And then if there's any more time, we're getting short. If there's any more time, I'll come back and maybe do some more work refining the uh, shadows. And... But I definitely think he's going to get, he's going to get done today. I might mess, mess around with a few more details afterwards if I feel like playing, but for the most part, really liking where he's going with this. Oh, great question. Great question. So... Starving Arts Collective asked, Angela, do you ever use oils? Um, and then she said, or do the craft thing. So we'll go back to this one. Do I ever use oils? So my very first easel that I had in the studio here, you got to go back. You got to go back to the first videos. I say that like I have so many videos right now. But in the first videos... I had my old A-frame easel. Excuse me. That easel was given to me by my dad. And he also gave me his oil paints. And they were, they're good brand paints. Um, off the top of my head, I can't tell you what they are right now. But they are very good brand paints. I was like, oh, this is fantastic. I am, I am going to use these. I can't wait. I got some odorless mineral spirits to be able to clean my brushes. I had not a clue what I was doing. I was just painting like, you know, I would paint acrylics. I knew they were going to stay wet. Right. Like I knew that they were going to stay wet. They were not going to, I was going to put them on and in 15 minutes it was going to be dry and I was going to be able to keep moving on. I knew that was not a factor. That was not something that was going to happen. Um, but I was doing, working on a painting. Things were not going well. I was not in a happy place. And I also wondered after hours of painting why the heck I was getting a headache well I was getting a headache because I left the odorless mineral spirits open yeah that was a lesson um a very uh, costly lesson that I Will never ever forget. I will never forget to maintain keeping my. I mean, I have Odorless Mineral Spirits still. I have it for working with color pencils. But I lost one of my birds. Um, the birds didn't. The birds were in the other room. Luckily, 
my conure, of course, was um, covered. He was wrapped. His cage was completely wrapped. And luckily, because my poor parakeet, whose cage wasn't wrapped, and he was also higher in the room, he didn't make it. He was gone the next day. And I have to assume it was from, that, that it was from that, that it was open. I couldn't smell it. And then when I started getting a headache, that's when I realized, oh crap, this is open. Yeah. So I haven't done oil since. I just, it was all around a completely not a great experience. And so... I have not gone back to it all though I will say I've been very curious to try the like the water mixable oils because if that means that I don't have to worry about you know the odorless mineral spirits or and I don't have any liquid either cuz the time you know wanting it to dry faster that would be me I would be wanting it to hurry up and dry hurry up and dry so yeah That's my experience with oils and I haven't gone back. I'm not opposed to trying it again. I just, I haven't, I did get a full set, like I said, in one of the art boxes. I'm sure it's not, you know, I don't know. Maybe it is a great quality set. I'm not sure because it is definitely not a medium that I'm always looking up you know, makers of the supplies. As for the crafting thing, um, I will sometimes, I used to all the time. I would craft all kinds of stuff and, you know, do artwork on it, do, I would do artwork on all kinds of different things, but crafts like making crafts, I loved it. Of course, I have a Cricut here, the Cricut machine, and I thought, oh, that'd be great. I could like paint and then I could do, you know, cut out stuff and make signs and do. I've never touched it. I have not hooked it up and used it. Okay. I'm stopping there with the moss because I've got to get our little gnome. I've got to get our gnome going <clears throat> so that we can get him finished. JR said, I gave up oils when I had kids. Yeah, see, and that's, that's it, right? Like I know, um, if anything happened to Tuca because of supplies that I was using in the studio, like for example, when I just had to varnish that painting, we've gotten snow and I could not, what do we decide on the hat? What did we decide? Purple, purple hat. Let's see. I'm trying to find probably the easiest one to see over here. Did we say purple hat? Pretty sure we did. Yep, purple hat. All right, we're going to go with a purple hat. Orange shoes orange shoes, purple hat. All right, we got it. Um, we'll get this orange out here. This is the darker one. Yep. And this one is my lighter one. All right. I want a kind of mixture of these two. Less smell and water mixable oils. Products from Schmink it called Medium W. It's fast oils drying gel that has no smell and maintains water cleanup. That is interesting. That is, that is cool to know. I'm definitely like, I've seen some beautiful oil paintings and would love to successfully, you know, give it a go. Absolutely. 
but I just haven't, uh, I definitely have not touched them since since the, you know, fiasco. I felt horrible. I was like, oh my gosh. And Lou's like, well, you know, maybe he was old. I don't think so. You know, miners took canaries into the mines for a reason. Unfortunately. And I knew by the way I felt. I felt horrible. So, like me, myself, physically, I physically felt horrible. Of course, I emotionally felt horrible the next day when poor Colonel was... That was his name, Colonel. Had not survived. Or maybe it was Sarge at that point. I don't know. But anyways, one of the two. Yes, military. Military family. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to actually pull in a little bit of this dark. See if I can't mix it. I'm messing up her hair. We're messing up our little palette. Our palette feature. I just want to darken up the base at the bottom. And just let that kind of have a gradual fade. There we go. It's little shoes. That was a good choice. I like the color. I like the color. And now we said purple hat. Okay, let's see what this purple does. I think that purple's going to pop with the color of the mushrooms. I'm excited. Let's see. That is a dark purple. Do we want the dark, dark purple? Or we got this light purple. So we are just about done. And of course, yes, Joe. So sorry. I really tried today. Really, really tried today to be done on time. If any of you missed Joseph's roast of me and my tardiness or my inability to finish in a timely manner, <laughs> it was all taken in good fun. So no matter how serious he was. And you guys cannot see my face because I am off camera right now. But um, yeah, I was making faces at you. All right. Ooh, I like that purple. I like that purple. Okay. That's the one I'm doing. There we go. Because then I can come back with the darker lines. I can darken it up with the purple marker. Look at his little purple hat. All right. Now I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the dark purple marker and I'm going to just use that maybe to get some outline. I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with the fine nib on the other side. I was like, oh, I'm going to really pay attention today. I am going to be done on time. I'm going to show him I will. <sighs> yeah. I thought we were headed there. And it was all the mixing. It was all the mixing of the moss. And that right there, my friends, is the thing that says, Joseph wins. I'm late again. But I hope you guys don't mind hanging out with me. I really like hanging out with you. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna try to see if I can blend that slightly. 
See, once you set it to the paper, it does not want to blend. Like, no matter what you do going over that, you're, that line that you make, it's going to stay there. So that is my little gnome hat. And now I really need to get this brush clean because he needs his nose. There we go. And I'm actually thinking that this little color I have right here might lend itself really nicely. You guys can't see because the reference photo is there. This color that just happened it desaturated that orange um, with some of this that we already had over here. And I think it might make a nice nose color. Let's see when it dries. I'm just going to leave the top with a little bit of a highlight there and just let it go. If it bleeds slightly up into it, I'll let it, you know, that's fine. I'm not going to be upset with it. Okay. So now I'm going to come back over here to some of this dark that I had. And actually, I need to lighten it up. No, that's going to, that's warm. I want a lighter gray so that I can get, and I'm going to swap. I'm going to take this little detail brush. Little teeny tiny thing. I don't even know who makes these. This is, um... Royal Majestic. It's a Royal Ma Royal Majestic 4250. Uh, like I would be able to read it to you. Is that a five aught? It might be a five aught, you know, five slash zero. I'm not positive. It's hard to see because of the way the writing is. But regardless, it's a tiny brush. So let's go with it's a tiny brush. And I want to be able to do the details in his beard. And that's why I picked this one. Sometimes I'll sign with this one too when I'm doing like on my commission. I can hear. Is anybody else? Can anybody else hear uh, Lisa right now? telling me clumps and clusters I do I appreciate it I'm like ooh, focus like don't it's not a bunch of little lines just trying to keep that point round and again if I put my glasses back on there we go Just darkening up under his nose a little bit. And up near the top was his hat will be shadowing some of his hair. dry so fast. And I may be able to just, you know, I could probably very easily have done this just grabbing the fine point of the, you know, marker, the fine point end of the marker. But when I want it to be smooth and, you know, also be able to fill it in. Hi, Jamie. I'm glad you made it. See, we stayed late just, just to be sure that you'd be able to check in with us. And, um, yep, 
That's why. Oh, actually, I do see one of his little pant legs here. I'm just noticing that. What color do we say? Throw that back out there. What color were his uh, pants going to be if he had pants? Throw that out there so I can put them in. What color pants? We got our orange, our orange shoes, our purple hat. And I can see just a little bit of a pant leg at the bottom. So what color? So as we are wrapping this up, just the reminders, um, I do have that new video that will be Saturday for patrons, that snowy winter mountain scene. That's, that's Saturday. Next Tuesday at three, I will see you with the unboxing of the November palletful pack box. And we will, again, the new format, I will unbox it and create art for you in that video using whatever's in the box. So that'll be fun. Red. Okay, we got red. All right. Do we have red? Yep, we got red. Um, and I think I'm going to make his red uh, kind of like a deep, almost maroonish red because this red is very orange, very much orange. And I know last time I was experimenting almost it put a little speck bring that saturation down I don't think this one it's very hard to mix with this tiny little brush though I will say that so not exactly what this is meant for all right Give him little pants. A little bit of pant leg showing there. I actually have a little bit showing there. Look at him. Thinking I'm gonna take a little bit of that red we just made and maybe help rosy up the bottom part of this nose. And then I'm just gonna clean that off. It's our little gnome. There he is. So next week, next week, and again, I, I would, I would fuss with him more. If I had more time, I would definitely fuss with him more. I would go even bolder on my, on my darks around, you know, my mushrooms and stuff like that. Like darken some of this up down here because I think this needs to be more dark. Um, so st stuff that I might do off camera, but for now. For now, if I can manage here, that will be our little gnome.
So there he is on his little birch tree, sleeping in his moss. I really, I'm liking the way that the mushrooms came out. And really, the only difference between this and done is a little more time. Like, I think I could, I would really, really like it if uh, I kept at it or even came back over it with like some pastel pencil or which I wouldn't do pastel pencil on this paper. It's not going to stick well. Uh, I would say colored pencil and that would be like, yeah. So, all right, where is my, yeah. That's our little gnome. Let's see my thoughts on these markers. I think if I had marker paper, and I'm pretty sure I do somewhere, I'm going to have to give it a try and see if I feel differently. Because the way that I feel about them right now, oh, let me just show you guys. Talking about this, you know, palette, so ceramic tray, <clears throat> using them on here. Just taking some of my alcohol, pour just a little bit of that down on there. And uh, yeah, see the whole thing, it'll just wipe clean. And that's all I need to do. And the whole plate will come clean. Then I just wash it with some soap and water. See that? All done. You no, know, it's not completely clean yet, but I don't want to smell the, I don't want to smell the smells. In fact, I want to cap this because it stinks. And then we will recap. Okay. <clears throat> so you see, I, I'm still a bit washed out. More, more, um, more upgrades are coming. More upgrades are coming. So I can't wait. Soon we will. We will be seeing some more improvements here. Let me just go through the chat. I don't want to miss anything that anybody had said. Uh, okay, so JR said Lucas has water mixable oils. Um, I've heard, I, yeah, I want to say I heard that. I have, I have the Lucas gouache, which again, it's one of those supplies I haven't tried yet. Looking forward to it, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, Medium W can be mixed with regular oils to make them water mixable and soap and water cleanup too. Really interesting. The moss is looking great as it's drying. Thank you. See, the more it's sat, like, all right, I'm going to fight the, which, which way is the camera here? Really? If, to, if I had more time, I would have come back through and gotten a lot more of the shadows because if you see um, right there, whoops, nope, I had it right the first time. If you see the moss on that one, right? See how much darker? And it just looks so much better. So yeah, it's just the only difference is time. It's just a little bit more time and I could achieve that. Um, still going with the alcohol markers, I could achieve that. I'd have no doubt that I could achieve what the effects that I want to get. I think I could still do only using the marker still. I, I am now more confident in using them. I'm very glad that I tried them. Uh, let's see. I can't oil spot uh, to try, but I don't want to poison us all in the house. Yeah. See. Done on the time is folklore. Done on time. Yeah. Folklore. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except Joseph seems to be like, and it's five o'clock. Bye. See you later guys. Click off. And I'm like, <sighs> stream goals, you know, stream goals. Sorry guys. <clears throat> it was a nice try. I don't mind overtime. Well, thank you. Thank you, Belle. It's coming together so well. I don't mind extra time. Thank you, Tara. And starving. don't have markers yet, but just remembered I have alcohol inks that I could use in a watercolor style as you are doing an experiment with them. You could absolutely, absolutely use them this way. Just put the, you know, drops of the alcohol ink on, like I said, this is just a ceramic plate that I was using. I got it for a dollar at the dollar store 
And um, I also have a butcher's palette, which I thought about using my butcher's palette. I didn't want to take up that much space on the desk. <clears throat> and I knew I was only going to be working in a few colors. So even that, you saw I filled that plate with just a couple colors. And Jamie snuck in the back door. Good, good job. It looks great from markers. Thanks, Belle. I will tell you what. Compared to my marker drawings of the past, it looks fantastic. <laughs> it looks fantastic. You know, it's by no means like, and that's the other thing. Well, I will ask you guys. That'll be my, my parting question for you guys. Um, Jamie says, looks great. Thank you. Tara says, I love it. Thank you. I have been looking at some of the art that I've been creating and I'm like, just kind of look at like the range of things I've done in videos, um, things that, you know, that are saved in my pictures as I look back and I'm like, gosh, you're all over the place. Like I am all over the place. I mean, there's that, right? Which is definitely, definitely more realistic. I mean, that, that's very, very close to its photo reference. Um, and then, you know, I've got like my hat, my little snowman card, my little gnome character. It's, you know, I'm like, it's all over the place. Do you guys ever feel like that? Or we'll get back to talking to you here. Do you guys ever feel like that? Or do you, you know, I just like, I feel like I don't have a defined, like I don't have that, you know, you go, oh, what is your style? Mine is, uh, I am a Jill of all arts. Yeah. Of all mediums. How about that? Like I just got to play with them all and I don't really settle down on a style or a medium. I just love creating and playing with things. That's why I love getting the art boxes and sharing them with you because look, look at this. I've, I had never touched this before. I can honestly say that now that I have touched it, I don't know that you're going to see another marker project from me for a little while. I mean, I'm sure there's other boxes that would have markers and you know what? I would absolutely go at it again and give those a try because they could be totally different. There could be a paper in that box. It's like all of a sudden it's magic and this becomes my absolute favorite thing to use in the world. I doubt it, but it could. You never know. Never say never or always. So I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Tara says you're just well-rounded with them a lot like myself. I just love playing with different mediums and experience like some people. Oh, I only work in acrylics. Okay. Well, that's great if that's your choice. But why would I only want to play with one when there's so many beautiful things out there? To play with. I'm not going to, you know, take my acrylics in the Jeep when I'm traveling, but I sure as heck will sit there with my pencils. You know what I mean? Like anyways, all the, all the pretty things, all the mediums. Here's what we've got next Tuesday, palatful packs. Um, next Thursday, not live. You will have to watch for the, um, thumbnail to see if it's announced, if it's going to be a premiere or not. Depends if I can get away with it. Otherwise, it will just be a regular video. It will still be at my regular, both of those will be at my regular three o'clock time. Saturday is the, um, this, this is gonna like, that's gonna mess with me because this other light is just completely blowing me out. So there you go. Saturday is the winter mountain snow scene. That's Saturday for patrons. And that will also be at three. I'm, everything is stay. I, 3 PM Eastern time is when I try to make all my videos go live, unless some kind of unforeseen problem happens. Um, then I try to notify you guys, but Saturday will be that for patrons. And thank you so much to my patrons for your support. I greatly appreciate you. In fact, we're getting new lights. We're getting new lights tomorrow. So thank you because you help make that possible. Um, I'm going to hopefully, if all goes well, also have an announcement for you 
when I do my studio tour. So keep my fingers crossed. I don't want to say anything early just in case, but stay tuned next Thursday for that. And you know, have a happy Thanksgiving. Um, I know I'll probably tell you in my video, but I would like to tell you now in person. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. And oh, also don't forget, check out Joseph's channel. The link is definitely in the description below. Jan said, there's nothing wrong with working with multi mediums. See, I love them. I love them. It's, I got to play with all the things. So check out Joseph's channel. The link is in the description below. And after the live stream is ends in process, I will be sure to share over here another video over here for you that you can check out and click on if you're watching the replay. And if you are watching the replay and you want to join us, we're live every Thursday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Come hang out. We chat. We have fun. We watch me try to learn new supplies or have fun creating with supplies that I have, am very accustomed to. So check out the video up here. And until next time, guys, keep creating. And I will see you on Tuesday. Bye.